what difference does that first three points make? Yeah, look, I can't, I can't deny that. Um, I think it must be a sense of relief for a lot of players who never won in the Premier League. But I think for us now, it's about reminding that we, we move on now. We've got Chelsea coming up soon and, and, and that's obviously a, a key game for us as well. They'll be a lot more confident. Can you detect that amongst your players? I just wonder what gives you the sign that a player now feels a bit more confident? Yeah, look, I, I try to balance that. I, I'm, I'm not a big believer in confidence. Like I know you, you ideally you want it and you want confidence and momentum. But I think you've got to build your own confidence in moments where you maybe not have, you don't have the results. I think confidence comes for me with consistency and, and doing what you should be doing every time and then trusting that you can do it, that you belong there. Um, so I hope they had confidence before Luton, but there's no doubt in my mind that we, we can take um, positives out of the Luton game into the Chelsea game. And now you have to do it again at home against a Chelsea side who've not had the best of starts to the season. What, what do you make of Chelsea this season? Um, yeah, I've, I've had the chance to put a little bit more work into it now and and they're a talented side, really talented. And, you know, uh, the first question that pops up to my mind is, uh, is, is you know, how unlucky they have been really. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, I, I get it. It's, a, it's, it's always the case with big clubs. You have the pressure of having to have results all the time. But when I look at the, um, the game and what they're doing, I, I, I see... I see a very, very good side and uh, with very good players. So uh, it'll happen at some time, at some point, no doubt. <laughs> Hopefully just not a turf more. A win or a draw may take you out of the bottom three. Is that psychologically important to you at the moment? Um, no, I, I can't. I can't say I've spent much time looking at the league so far. I've, I've looked at the fixtures for sure. And like I say, I recognise that our, our first eight games were against the type of teams that we played against now, like Chelsea and so on. Um, we got four out of six against Luton and Forest, which were the only two teams that would be, um, you know, those type of games where we, we have to try and get results. But it'd be nice to now, with the Chelsea game, look at this game and say, OK, maybe we can add these type of games as well to get results in. And then I know with the fixtures coming up that we'll get more more of the type of games like we had against Forest or Luton where um, we actually have a chance before the, the ball's kicked, you know. Where <laughs> these games are always difficult now. Forest and Luton are in a group of about six clubs just above you at the moment in the table. Is that your is that your mini league? I just wondered how, how big you see that mini league at the moment within the Premier League. Are you looking at the bottom half of the table maybe? Yeah, I, I think I've said it at the start of this season, uh, it's, it's hard for me to say who belongs in, in, in that mini league and who doesn't. I think time will tell. But there's certainly, from what I can tell, a, a, a gap with some of the squads that we face in terms of, you know, when you look at the Villa squad, the Tottenham squad, I mean, they're powerful squads in every way, in, in, in every sense of the way, you know, with, um, you know, something to aspire to as well. I'm not saying that. It's beyond, but it's beyond us. But it'll take time for for teams like us to get to this. And I think there's a cluster of clubs, like ourselves, who are um, just trying to close that gap. But every game is another game, and you always have a chance on 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 you know on Saturday. We have a chance as well. It doesn't matter what what a team has spent. Final one from me. The big VAR debate has raged on obviously this <laughs> week. Um, I'm sure you've been aware of it. Um, what do you make of Jurgen's um, suggestion or, or or almost demand that that his his game against Spurs should be replayed because of such a a, a really really serious mistake? What do you make of that? Um, I get the feeling. I completely understand the feeling, and and you must feel you know powerless when it happens. Um, but my own opinion is just, you know, it's quite simple. Um, human er error is what it is, you know, and it's not necessarily the VAR itself that failed. It was a, it was a mistake and, 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 and they're the hardest one to take. But my feeling is more about the fact that VAR is, 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 is there to stay and, and that we just have to learn to, um, to, to, to live with it and improve it to the best we can. And whether there should be a replay or not, I, I'll, I'll let over debate about it, but human errors is what it is. It happens in, in many things of life. Thanks for your time. Hi, Vincent. Um, in terms of uh, the journey you're on, in terms of the squad and what have you, and, and the learning curve, now that you've got that first win under your belt, where do you see 
the squad developing now in terms of where you want them to be? Yeah, I, I don't think we're any further away from what we want to achieve or any closer to what we want to achieve than than we were before Luton. I think it's just we have to keep at it. We we we, we don't panic when when we don't get the results, even if the performances are good. And, and, and I think now we don't get carried away because we've had one result. We just do everything we can to win the next game. And in terms of um, now moving on, um, because of the, the results that you've had previously, was it difficult or was it easy for you to, to stick to your principles and say to the players, look, we keep working, this will work exactly as, as I want it to? I, I think... For, for for us coaches, I think it's easy to to stay to stay on a, on on. It's it's not so much. It's not only what you believe in. It's sometimes it's also what you know and 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 what you've you 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 know your players are able to do ultimately and to stick a course that will get them there. But I think in general, it's always a case of making sure that the 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 players understand either how good they can become you know and 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 what what it can do for them if they if they stick the course so it's just really a constant effort of convincing we did it last year and it's part of a coaching job and in terms of the finances when you look at the money that's been available for a club like Burnley and a, a club like Chelsea how does that sort of compute in your head in terms of right we've seen the money that they're able to spend and the players that they can bring in how do we go about trying to close that gap in terms of what actually happens on the field yeah do you know what i i've obviously been a part of an environment where you know money could be spent you know when i was a player so um and now i'm part of an environment where you're not necessarily you're far from being the biggest spender and and i do you know what I, I don't I don't have one single point of complaint about it. I think for us it's just aspiring to win these games, aspiring to compete. That's the exciting part for me, whether they spend more or less. It, it doesn't really come into my mind, although I know that they have fantastic players, of course, I get that. Um, but it doesn't come into my mindset too much, not, not as a fatality for us, at least. Um, the exciting part as well is that, like I said before, you know, um, we... Um, we 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 can get so much better just on our own resources, just on our own, um, just just by our, our own forces, and and that's for me something really exciting. Thank you. Does it matter whether you spend a hundred million on a player or ten million or one million? Is it the same basics of trying to integrate them, trying to get them to work the way you want to work? Is the challenge still the same? Yeah. So do you know what? I give my opinion, but I make a very clear distinction. I am absolutely not making any point whatsoever on the opponent that we are facing. So if there's ever a headline that comes out and says, that's what I'm saying about Chelsea, it's not true. Uh, but I'll, I'll make my point anyway. So uh, because I've been in that environment of having being in a place with money, winning it, and, and of course, buying a player that is already proven thing, that you're going to have to pay money for that. But winning and the standards and the habits, we speak a lot about this, the behavior you need to have to win consistently, that's something that you can transfer in, even into a club that's not spending as much. And that's what really matters. That's what really matters. And for me, I think we can, we can be a winning club, a winning team without necessarily spending as much. And if overachieving is, 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 a sense, is an indication of success, then I think eventually, it doesn't happen overnight, <laughs> as, as you've seen, uh, but eventually you can overachieve and, and that's also victory. So that's the, the path we committed to. That's what I do every single day. And I'm not trying to compare finances, I'm trying to compare standards. And I'd like to think that this place here has the highest standards, amongst the highest standards in the league, despite the fact that we don't have the the, the resources or results at the moment from the best teams in the league. But that's a very separate question for me. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting to compare your summer and your season last season and your summer and your season this season. You've spent more, relatively speaking, this time. Yeah. 
You're it's always relative. Any... That's, that's yeah. important to but say. But you're not doing anything differently, are you? Whether you spent nothing on a player last year and now you've paid money for a player, the process remains the same. Yeah, but I think it's always about the attention. So what what we're trying to do always is kind of maximise the potential of a, an individual, a, a player that comes into our group, maximise that. And that's just, it demands just a lot of consistency, a lot of attention to detail. It demands for them as well to be resilient, to be able to stay consistent in moments where you win, you lose, and all these things happen. Change of, uh, you, you go and live in another country, one day you have a missus, then you don't have one anymore, or whatever you choose as a partner. You know, it's it's these type of moments that you have to get them through. And, and I believe that um, when they realize that, you get the best out of players. And I think that if you take the average of a player, even in the Premier League with the top level, there's still a lot out there that maybe don't maximise on their talents. And that's the opportunity for us to get results because not everyone is doing that, hopefully. Is it easy for us, this side of the desk, perhaps not your side of the desk, to forget that these are people? We look at price tags, we look at positions, yeah. we look at performances, but actually they have all the same things that we have in our lives. Yeah. But that's that's the nature of the game. Do you know what? There, there is an aspect as well that it, it's pretty old school in terms of the things you have to be able to deal with that probably are changing in society nowadays. So when I'm speaking to these young people, I can't prevent them from going into a stadium and hearing 30, 40,000 people bringing back up every single trauma they've had in their life to destabilize them and, and get the performance away. You know, so they're, they're having to be mentally tough. They're having to, to be able to deal with abuse, whether it's online or in the, in the, in the stadium. They're having to be able to deal with uh, people who are going to be aggressive in the faces. And so I'm thinking they're, they're human beings in that sense, but at the same time, they're having to, to be tougher really early. Otherwise, you don't, um, yeah, you, you're just not going to get, you don't get the, the protection that people imagine sometimes when, when you're in our line of work and it's important to be able to prepare them for that. Is it quite unforgiving, particularly when you're signing young players, as you said? Yeah, I mean, but it's it's unforgiving. People forget it's unforgiving from a young age. When you're seven, eight years old, if you're not good enough, they tell you to move on. Nine, 10, 11, 12, the same process everywhere. Do this or move on. So I do think you come out of it with a lot of... It's it's To be honest, it's, it's also a good school to go through in terms of being prepared for real life. But these kids are having to be mature at a very 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 young age is true they don't get away with you know like Colorado is 18 19 you know but if he doesn't track his man back and stuff he's gonna have to hear it from so many people not just the coaching stuff and and that you're exposed to this but you have to look at it in a positive way as well it's um it it it, it prepares them for this world and and we are we try that's important to mention i think we try and have an environment that just supports them as well so that they don't fall back and they're on their own like we support them and we tell them no look this is what you go through and this is how you handle it. We spoke last season a few times about working with players for the first time and going through the processes that you want to go through and then getting tangible results to justify, you know, back up that you're doing the right thing. You talked about convincing before. Yeah, Is always. winning a game the sort of tangible evidence that you need for those that haven't worked with you before? Um, it, it helps, but it's winning a game. It's It's... It's pre-season. If you're lucky enough to have pre-season with the players as well, it's 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 just constantly hammering the messages that you want them to 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 understand. And then in the end, you know, um, I do think as well that players have to believe in themselves as well that they can do it. They're, they're, you know, and and it's it, it it could be as easy as saying go out there and play, and it could be very complex in trying to understand what actually makes them tick. It's a little bit of everything. And just lastly. I think seven players have started every Premier League game for you. Have you found a sort of spine that you can augment by players coming in and out at this point? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always cautious with mentioning spine. Like I said before, um, watch any team picture when the lads are lifting trophies in the air or doing something successful. The last game of the, the season, or it's not often the same picture as the first game of the season. So yeah, you have to let the group as well fight it out a little bit. Um, you could you could name players who are key players now, 
but if you do it too early, you may be settled in the wrong form. So for me, it's more about them showing every single week that they um, that they earn the right to play, and, um, and 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 slowly and organically, then a spine kind of comes through, especially in a club with a lot of new players. Okay. Hi, Benny. Uh, Hi there. Do you see similarities between your position and Pochettino, where you've signed a lot of players and now you're having to integrate them? and maybe both teams will improve as the season goes on in, the, in terms of their results? Um, it's difficult f for me to say what what he's experiencing. I, I don't know. Honestly, um, you know, I, I have my, my references from being at a top club, so I know the pressure that comes with that. Um, I have my references from working with young players, so I know as well the challenges that come with that. But other than that, all I can say is that we um, at, at Burnley, we, um, I th you know, I, th I think it's fair to say that we we're in a slightly different situation, and 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 we focus on that. We're sort of well into the season now. Um, uh, how is the pro is that process going of integrating the new signings? How are they all getting on? We have a good group, good good players, good good. Um, like I have no complaints from my side. I'm I'm really happy and excited you know as a manager you always want to to achieve your ideal in terms of the squad and what you think you need for the league and it's it's never enough as a manager that's that's the name but but at the same time i'm excited every day to work with them it's a good group they're, they're willing to learn they work hard they run their socks off for 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 ourselves and for the fans and 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 so that's that's for me the start that's the starting point and from there i believe that we can get results and um, you spoke last last week about player welfare and having a cap on the number of appearances yeah. that players have. What's your thoughts on having an international break so close to the one that we just had last month? Um, I I tried to simplify things in my mind, so I offered like a solution that solves everything, right? So you, you because you talk about complex issues <laughs> in terms of you've got on one side. Every single organization and new organization that wants to be created, that wants to organize better games for the good of the games, transport games worldwide so you can see them in South America as much as in the Middle East, as much as back home here in England where the Premier League is. And, and so all these tensions to, to add more games eventually... Because money talks, those games are getting added anyway in one form or shape. And, and it's always the players who are having to then absorb that load. And rather than to have a continuous discussion about which league is the right league, which amount of... If you put a cap and you say, I've got a player that can play 65 games in a calendar year or, or in, t in a 12-month period, 65 games is 65 games. It's a lot of games, a lot of football. And if you organize 90 games across the season, that's fine. You can transport your club and your coaches for 90 games. And, and you can, but you have to manage 65 games per player. Uh, so it, it kind of allows for more games to be played and clubs to be involved in more competitions if, if that's for the good of football, if that's what they decide. And at the same time, just simply protect the players' welfare, that's all. It, it, it allows as well for more players to join the game, which in such a competitive environment is never a bad thing. Hi, Vinny. Uh, physical gamer against against Luton. Um, how's the squad? They can come through it okay. Um, yeah, mostly. I think we're still assessing. So next twenty four hours will give us more. Yeah, Anas uh, Zavori wasn't in the squad on on Tuesday. Is is he available for for Chelsea? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I think where we're at now, we we. Um, I think we have a lot of players who um, are of a similar level, which is a good thing, by the way, in, in the way I look at it. And um, yeah, sometimes we might have to leave one player out and bring him back in and then leave another player out. I think, you know, we're always trying to start with the, the, the 11 that we think is the best suited to win the game. But behind that, I think there's a lot of players who are of similar levels. And, and so you might see a few changes in that without it meaning more than that. Yeah, I've seen uh, Darko Chernov uh, called up the international duty. How, how are you managing that situation? Obviously, not in your Premier League squad. Uh, he is in the Premier League squad. Is he? Being yeah, 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 yeah. That <laughs> there was just a technicality actually, <laughs> which I'm I'm glad to explain. Um, we had Bastian, who um, was about to finalise a loan deal to Turkey, so we knew that 
Uh, but Bastian was fit and Chernoff was not. And we knew that as soon as Bastian leaves to Turkey, we can just activate Chernoff. So he's, he's, he's part of the squad. Okay. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, you, you spoke about getting a balance right between the experienced players and maybe some of the younger ones. Um, have you felt you found you, you know you've got that now? Maybe you, that you worked on that last couple of weeks. Yeah, it, it's it's always it's always about finding a balance. But but I think ultimately, and and this is my, my position is really clear on this. I think it, ultimately team cohesion. So that means having played together, knowing what your tasks are on the pitch is much more ex uh, important than um, exp experience. So if your team is able to move like one in every phase, that's more important, but it takes time. And um, But in terms of the balance, I thought we, we wanted to always make sure we had enough players that could actually um, take us through this, this Premier League and at the same time have enough talent to, um, to help us become a little bit more in this Premier League as well. And I think we struck that balance quite okay but we're still a work in progress in that sense. Thanks, man.